Good morning. We'll just give folks a minute to clear the waiting room and connect to audio. As a reminder, when you are entering from the waiting room, please do remain on mute unless or until you are appearing or testifying before the board. Good morning. Uh, yeah, my name is Ozeas. Uh, let me put the camera here just a second. Great. Thank you. And thank you for being with us this morning. Um, once again, please do remain on mute unless or until you are appearing or testifying before the board. Hi, good morning. My name is Giovanna. Thank you, and thank you for being with us this morning. Once again, as a reminder, please do remain on mute unless or until you are appearing or testifying before the board. It appears that the waiting room has now been cleared. Good morning. This is a hearing before the licensing board for the city of Boston. Today is Tuesday, January 3rd, 2023. Today's hearing is being held pursuant to temporary amendments to the open meeting law. That is what allows us to meet virtually. Today's hearing is being recorded and will be posted to the City of Boston's website. Before I review procedural matters, I will introduce Chairwoman of the Board, Kathleen Joyce. Thank you, Danny. My name is Kathleen Joyce. I'm Chair of the Boston Licensing Board, and today I'm joined by Commissioner Liam Curran and Commissioner Kiana Saxon. Thank you. Uh, please ensure that your audio and visuals are working properly. I will call each item in the order that it appears on this morning's agenda. I will then ask who is present on behalf of the licensee, who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department, and whether there are any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify. I will then swear in all parties. After that, the police report will be read into the record, and the licensee or their representative will have the opportunity to make a brief statement, followed by questions by the chair and the commissioners. Again, all testimony will be limited only to those individuals with firsthand personal knowledge of the alleged incident. And we will begin by taking one item out of order due to a scheduling conflict. Uh, we will start by calling item number five on this morning's agenda and then returning to the agenda order. Calling item number five on this morning's agenda, GM Restaurant Enterprises, Inc., doing business as La Terraza, located at 19 Bennington Street in East Boston. Date of the incident was June 22nd, 2022. Patron on patron assault and battery. <laughs> Chapter 138, section 64, and Chapter 265, section 13A. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Uh, good morning, Michael Ford, uh, attorney representing uh, GM Restaurant Enterprises, and also with me is the assistant manager, Jose Velada. Thank you very much. And who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Uh, good morning, this is Officer Ryder, the Boston Police Department, District 7. Morning, sir. It's Detective Espino from the Boston Police Department. Thank you very much. Are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? Can you all please? Hi, my name, is, my name is Angel. I'm the security guard from, from La Terraza. Great. Thank you very much. Can you all please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you very much. Uh, Officer Ryder, will you be reading the police report into the record? Yes. Great, you may proceed. All right, so about 2.13 a.m. today, June 22nd, 2022, Officers Ryder and Ortiz in the Gold 201 Alpha and Officer Shears in the Gold 416 Alpha responded to a radio call for a fight at the intersection of Bennett and Border Street in East Boston. Officers were initially unable, unable to locate anyone in the area at the above intersection. However, Officer Shears was able to make contact with an apparent victim identified as Christopher Martinez in the area of 73 Bennington Street shortly thereafter. Martinez informed officers that he was attacked by an unknown male outside of La Hacienda on 150 Meridian Street. Martinez stated he heard the suspect arguing with another unknown party and that the suspect began to attack him for no reason. Martinez stated that the suspect struck closed fists Martinez added that he was also kicked in the face at some point during the attack. Officers observed redness and contusions on the right side of Martinez's forehead, right eye, and right cheek. 
Martinez was unable to provide officers with a description of the suspect. Boston EMS A7 responded and transported the victim to the Massachusetts General Hospital for evaluation. Uh, officers spoke with a friend of Martinez and identified as Michael Romero Sanchez, who stated that he witnessed the attack. Romero Sanchez stated the incident happened in front of La Terraza, 19 Bennington Street, and they had uh, approximately six males assaulting Martinez. Ramiro Sanchez was either reluctant or unable to provide officers with any suspect descriptions or any other pertinent information. Thank you. We have a supplemental here as well. Um, Detective Espino, I'll be reading from the supplemental. Great. Thank you. <clears throat> I'll be reading from su supplemental from the same report number. Detective Espino conducted a follow-up investigation that revealed the incident did occur in front of La Terraza, located at 19 Bennington Street, East Boston. Detective Espino did discover surveillance footage near 19 Bennington Street, East Boston. In the footage, the fight was seen in front of 19 Bennington Street. The victim was also clearly seen in the footage walking away. On 6-23-2022, at 10 p.m., Detective Espino, Sergeant Detective Blas responded to 19 Bennington Street, La Terraza, for Code 35 license permits inspection. At the time of the inspection, the person in charge of the establishment was Romero Viada. At the conclusion of the inspection, Romero Viada signed and accepted the license premise inspection notice 022685. Violation was for patron on patron assault and battery. Mr. Viada stated that there was no security cameras on the presence and he was not working during the time of the incident. It's the end of the report. Thank you very much. Attorney Ford, would you like to address the alleged incident? Yeah, just uh, I think two brief questions for <clears throat> the detective or the uh, actually for the officer. Uh, this was as a re you were drawn to the scene as a result of a radio call, which stemmed from a telephone call. Is that fair to say? Yes. Okay. And then, of course, we came down there. Licensee was fully cooperative. So at the time that we responded, um, there was no one on scene. We didn't speak with the licensee or anyone in the license premise at the time. Uh, when the violation notice was handed uh, over, I think the next day, or so cooperative. Uh, I can answer that. Yes, he was very cooperative. Okay, th th thank you both. Uh, just briefly, I'm going to have uh, Mr. Jose Velada uh, answer a couple of questions. Make sure, uh, Mr. Velada, are you are you still on? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, would you introduce yourself to the board? Yep, my name is Jose Villada. I'm an assistant manager at La Terraza. And were you working that, I believe it was the Tuesday in June of last year? Yes, I was working. How many patrons were on, were there? 20, 20 patrons. And what did you have for staff? I had four way staffs and the security guard. And um, th this occurred during close, uh, both closing time, correct? Yeah, closing time. Could you describe what was going on inside the premises at that time? Um, it was 1.45, turn on the lights, everybody got to go. I normally go downstairs to the exit, make sure everybody leaves. Um, I saw when Martinez left, he started talking to four guys in a group and then out of nowhere, they started a fight. Security came down, he stopped the fight. Martinez walked to the right side of La Terraza, maybe one block. And then he came back and started the fight again. At this moment, we just called the police and it, it went over to the other street. And it was just like a little bit too crazy. Okay, but you did call the police, correct? Yeah, we did. And the security that you had did break up uh, the initial fight, correct? Correct. And then he walked down the street, correct? Yep. All right. And would he be welcome in the premises anymore? No. Okay. I have no further questions for Mr. Uh, for Mr. Villada. Um, I'll leave it to the board. Thank you very much. We'll start with Chairman Joyce. Do you have any questions? Just to clarify, does that mean he's banned from the premise? Yeah, pretty much. Um, he's the one who started the fight. Okay. I'm just curious. Like, do you have do you, do you train your staff to be familiar with? Martinez's picture and face so that if he tries to enter, they would say no? Yeah, the security that was working that night, he knows. Okay. It was, it was a slow night. 
Okay, and there were no issues leading up to this? No. Do you know how long Mr. Martinez was in the establishment? I want to say three hours. Okay, thank you. I don't have any other questions. Commissioner Carmer, Commissioner Saxon, any questions? Uh, nothing additional for me, thank you. I'm just curious how long um, it took for the guy to come back. Did you call the police after the first the first altercation? Because it sounded like there was a first altercation. He walked away and then came back and then. The security separated it. He separated the first flight. The guy walked, walked to the right side. And then he came back within a minute. He came back and started the fight all again. Got At it. this moment, we just called the police right away. And then it broke into the street, across the street. Got it. Good, good, good on the timing. Thank you. Thank you. Anything further from the board? Board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Returning to the top of this morning's agenda, calling item number one, BVP LLC doing business as the point located at 147 Hanover Street. Date of the incident, January 8th, 2022. Assault and battery, employee on patron in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Good morning. My name is Michael Ford, the attorney for BVP. Also with me, manager of record, Christopher Gall. Thank you very much. And who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Detective James Walsh, A1. Thank you. And are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? Can you please raise your right hand? Uh, Mr. Gall. There, great. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you very much. Detective Walsh, you may please proceed with the police report. About 9.15 hours on Saturday, January 8th, 2022 victim Oseas Santos de Oliveira and witness Giovanna Caroline Sousa de, de Oliveira walked into A1 to file an assault and battery report from 147 Hanover Street, the Point, Boston. Victim states he entered the establishment tonight at about 6.30 p.m. and was forced out around 7.30 p.m. Victim states that the suspect described above works there and assaulted him by grabbing him, pushing him out and pushing his head on the ground. The victim stated uh, Detective Walsh, we have lost your sound. One. Uh, Secretary, uh, Lieutenant Detective Troy can continue with the report if, uh, if, if Detective Walsh is unable to. Yeah, thank you. That would be great. I'm not sure what happened to him. Um, we got to the second paragraph. Uh, victim stated he entered the establishment tonight, that, that night at um, 18, 50, 1830 hours and was forced out around. 1930 hours. Victim stated that the suspect described above uh, works there and assaulted him by grabbing him, pushing him, and pushing him, uh, pushing his head on the ground. Victim stated that the suspect assaulted him in front of his daughter, witness, and shouted uh, an explicit to him and his daughter. Uh, victim stated his daughter's AirPod, AirPod Pros uh, were left at the bar after he was forced out. Victim stated this incident started after, uh, after being treated. Uh, badly by a waiter who slammed water on the table and, uh, and wet them. Victim stated that after, the, after they complained, they were handed a bill and asked to leave. Victim stated he was discriminated against and wanted to file a complaint. Um, victim was asked if he needed medical attention, but he refused. Officers noticed a wet stain and dirt on the victim's back on a sweater. Uh, and there's a supplementary report here uh, written by detective. Detective Walsh, and it states about 1845 hours on August 9, 2022, Detective Walsh and uh, Keneally 
issued a license premise violation to the point 147 Hanover Street for an assault and battery employee on patron that occurred on um, January 1st, 2022. Detective Walsh advised the bartender, uh, Catherine Barnett, or, sorry, Barrett, to make sure the licenses were posted in a conspicuous area, which they were not when the detectives arrived. Mr. Uh, Ms. Barrett accepted and signed, cooperated with the detectives. Um, that's the extent of the report. Thank you, Lieutenant Troy, for reading that in. And I do see that Detective Walsh has rejoined us in case there are any questions from the licensee. Thank you. I apologize about that. Well, thank you for uh, coming back. Uh, we'll turn over to uh, Attorney Ford uh, to see if you would like to address the alleged incident. Just, I think, two questions for Detective Walsh. Uh, did th this uh, result in any type of arrest or an application for complaint, uh, to the best of your knowledge? No. And uh, when the violation was handed, was the licensee cooperative? Yes. Uh, thank you so much, Detective. I just have a, a few questions for uh, Christopher Gall. Mr. Gall? Yes, sir. All right. Now, would you please introduce yourself to the board? Uh, my name is Christopher Gall. I am the manager record of BBC LLC, The Point, Boston. And the bartender, who uh, I'm sure the, the, the person who saw all, of, uh, saw all of this and was involved, what was her name? Kirsten Bernstein. And why isn't she here today? Uh, Kirsten Bernstein is no longer an employee of ours. Uh, she moved on to another career and she had prior engagements that she was not able to uh, um, <clears throat> be here today. All right. And you just recently learned of that uh, over the weekend. Is that fair to say? That's correct. I uh, learned that she is out of the state. All right. And but you did, as the manager record, conduct an investigation. Is that fair to say? Correct. OK. And can you explain what what? Uh, what you learned of what occurred in the uh, in the establishment with respect to the person who's the subject of the complaint. Uh, to my investigation, what I you know was able to conclude was that um, the patron uh, became disgruntled about the supposed water being spilled at them, became aggressive towards our bartender at the time, Kirsten. Um, you know, Kirsten felt a little uneasy by it. You know, tried to go about the right channels, dropping off the check you know, as they already had been there, you know, for, I'd say, you know, an hour, maybe less, um, and, you know, kind of move on and, you know, keep going. Uh, the customer did become disgruntled and then was asked to leave um, and walked out. That was, you know, kind of, you know, escorted out, not touched, not physical. There wasn't any type of, you know, violence things that would alert something to, uh, um, for us, you know, an altercation or an issue. Um, so, that's kind of how we had left it there. The daughter, um, I guess, had come back to Kirsten and said, our AirPods are here. Uh, she had searched for those, looked for those, um, and there was, you know, nothing found um, at the time. And then um, that was kind of it for us as we didn't hear anything about this until August, you know, seven months later, um, if you would, um, to, you know, investigate any further about this situation. Right. And were the police called? Uh, the, the police were not called on our end, no. And why was that? Um, just our, you know, judgment call and, you know, procedures. There wasn't a physical altercation. There wasn't a violence. There wasn't a threat on, you know, any type of somebody coming back and screaming. You know, it was, you know, customers upset, you know, over the, you know, alleged water being spilt on them and, you know, left, went about their way. There wasn't anything for us that would have alerted us to make a call to the police, you know, as we would in a situation that would require that. And video, as far as, uh, with, why don't you have any video? Um, our video system, I think it's on a six week um, delay. So if it was our six week scrub. Um, so if it were something that we were alerted of, we would have been more than happy to, you know, get video, download the video, and keep that on record for further dates or, you know, if evidence was needed. And uh, with respect to the posting of licenses, entertainment licenses, um, ISD licenses, uh, what, what's occurring? Have you done anything differently with that? Yes, yeah, so, so to my best recollection, when those the officers did come in with Catherine Barron, I think it was on a Monday. Our licensing was, we have an emergency exit where there's a, um, 
a gate from the kitchen. They were actually posted um, lower in a way. It wasn't, you know, in a fireway, but they, you know, said that wasn't, um, you know, posted in a you know, proper place. So we had moved those right away. And now when you walk in our entrance from um, Marshall Street on the cobblestone, they're posted right there in a frame, in a plaque, you know, very, very visible um, uh, for people to see. I have no further, uh, I have no further questions. Thank you, Chairman Joyce. Do you have any questions? I don't have any questions at this time. Commissioner Carner, Commissioner Saxon, any questions? Uh, no questions for me, thank you. None for me, thanks. Thank you. Uh, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Calling item number two, Lansdowne Boston Restaurant LLC doing business as House of Blues located at 15 to 41 Lansdowne Street. Get the incident May 15th, 2022. Assault and battery, patron on patron, in violation of Mass General Law, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Good morning, Attorney Green, Madam Chair, members of the board, Dennis Quilty, attorney representing the licensee. With me this morning is uh, Nick Beyer, who's the manager of record, Declan Megan of, of, of uh, Live Nation, Kevin Resende, security, and Kamal Jackson, Jackson who is the assistant manager on duty. Thank you. Thank you. And who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Detective Norman. Norman. Uh, <coughs> Detective Norman. Sergeant Joseph Holman. Good morning. Morning. Officer Good morning. Thomas Antonino. Excuse me? Officer Thomas Antonino, excuse me for the um, video ah. I can't get through. <laughs> Thank you very much. And are there any other individuals uh, with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? Okay. And officer, you said you can't connect to, um, to camera? Yes, correct. Okay, uh, can you please affirm that you are raising your right hand when asked to do so? Yes, I am. Thank you, can you all please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do, yes, I do. I do. I do. Thank you, who will be reading the police report into the record? Um, Austin Antonino will be reading it. Great, you may proceed. Okay, on um, May 15, 2022, about 10.30 p.m., Austin Antonino responded to a report for an assault at House of Blues at 15 Lansdown Street. On arrival, Austin Antonino spoke with a victim, victim number two, Mrs. D, who stated that the unknown suspect number two, who appeared to be highly intoxicated, knocked the drink out of her hand, but offered to buy a new one. That's when the unknown suspect number one, who was also highly intoxicated, threw several punches at the victim number one, Mr. D, uh, causing a contusion to his left eye, along with scratches on his neck and a laceration to his tongue. Um, the victim refused medical attention at this time. As the doormen were breaking up the altercation, the unknown suspect number two struck the victim, Mrs. Mrs. D, to the face area. No injuries were sustained. <clears throat> uh, both, suspects, both suspects fled on foot on Lansdowne Street towards Brookline Ave. It certainly the area was done by assisting units, but to no avail. That's it. Thank you very much. Uh, Attorney Quilting, would you like to address the alleged incident? There's, there's, a, there's a supplemental report, it appears, by Sergeant Hoban. Yep, you are correct. Sergeant Hoban, sorry, would you mind reading that in quickly? Yeah, no problem. Thank About 10.30 p.m., myself, Sergeant Hoban, along with other District 4 personnel responded to a call for a fight at the House of Blues located at 15 Lansdowne Street in Boston. Sergeant Hoban conducted a license premise inspection, also known as a Code 35. The House of Blues was issued a license premise violation number 042876 as a result of a patron-on-patron -patron assault and battery. Security Manager Kamal Jackson signed the notice on behalf of the establishment. Thank you very much. Now, Attorney Quilty, would you like to address the incident? Thank you, Mr. Green. Uh, if I may, um, Officer uh, Antonio, if I have a correction, you arrived on, on the scene after whatever incident occurred had already happened. Is that correct? Correct. And whatever information you uh, received came from Mr. and Mrs. D and then the security and employees of the establishment. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. <clears throat> Did the uh, establishment uh, personnel um, cooperate with you? Yes, they did. 
And are you aware, um, I'm informed that Mr. Um, Resende, who was uh, on security that evening, that directed his staff to call 911. Is that consistent with what you know to have happened? Yes, I don't know which one called, but I do know the security called 911. Okay, thank you, sir. And they, they stood by and cooperated with you? Yes. And no uh, no suspects were able to be identified or found um, afterwards, is that correct? Correct. They fled up for um, Lansdowne Street towards um, Brookline Ave, but um, a search of the area was done, but we couldn't find them. Okay. Um, thank you, uh, officer. I have no further questions. Mr. Resende, who instructed staff to call security, is available for your questions, uh, as is Mr. Jackson, who signed for the violation, as are either uh, Mr. Uh, Megan um, and Mr. Byer. We'll stand by. Thank you. Thank you. Chairman Drift, do you have any questions? I'm going to um, hold on my questions and turn over to the other commissioners first. Um, so the the suspects, was there any sign that they were problematic prior to this altercation? Mr. Um, Jackson or Mr. Resende, could you, do you, do, do you know that answer? Uh, it is. <clears throat> The, the way it's in the report, it's indicated as almost uh, as one disturbance, but it was actually two separate uh, parts of the same thing. There was um, a slight disturbance inside. They were separated, and that's when the incident outside happened. So uh, inside was the only time when we separated them immediately before it went outside. So were they were they asked to leave? Is that what happened? Yes. And then it got it got physical after they were outside. They had been separated, yes, but then after they got outside, they somehow reconnect. I wasn't with them when they reconnected, but they they found each other again somehow. Okay. All right. And so prior to the no indication prior to the first one that there was a, a problem with the the two people who were with the suspects who were described as highly intoxicated. No. Okay, that's all I have then. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Saxon, any questions? Nothing to add. Thank you. Thank you. Chairman Joyce, any questions? Oh, all right. Then the board will take, board will take this you. matter under advisement as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Calling Thank item you. number three, the Boston Leco Corp doing business as Legacy Boston, located at 71 to 79 Warrington Street. Date of the incident, June 6th, 2022, assault and battery, patron on patron, in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Oh, Mr. Glavis, we see you, but you are on mute. Hang on just one second. Unmute. Okay. How about now? We can hear you. Thank you. If you could just please identify yourself for the board. Uh, my name is George Kalivas. I'm uh, uh, the manager of record uh, for uh, uh, Boston Leco Corporation. Thank you very much. And who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Where's Chuck? Uh, uh, Chuck, Chuck Del Pidio uh, sh should be on too. Uh, I see Chuck's iPhone. Hang on one second. He's on mute as well. And also not connected to video. So hang, uh, I will ask Chuck to unmute. How's that? Is that better? We can hear you. Is it possible to turn your camera on as well? <clears throat> it's not on? No, your camera is not on. We can hear your audio though. Okay, start video. I'm trying. And in the meantime, if you could please identify yourself for the board. Uh, Charles Del Pidio. Thank you. And I, I will ask while you're trying to get your camera on, I will ask who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department. Detective Mark Law should be present. I'm present, sir. <clears throat> Thank you, Detective Walsh. Are there any other individuals? Uh, 
Okay, well, thank you. Are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? Uh, and Mr. Delpidio, you still are not able to connect to video? No, I'm trying. Okay, can you please uh, yeah. affirm, can you please affirm for the board that you are raising your right hand when asked to do so? Yes, I am. Thank you. Thank you. Can you all please raise your right hand? I am. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you, Detective Walsh. You may please proceed with uh, reading the police report into the record. Uh, about 5.55 p.m. on Monday, June 6, 2022, Officer Linehan of 96 received a walk into Area A1 station for an assault battery report at 279 Trauma Street. Uh, Officer spoke with the victim, Brian Hernandez, who stated that he was assaulted while at a candy bar at nightclub at 279. Tremont Street. Mr. Hernandez stated that he was walking to the bathroom when he was grabbed and thrown to the ground, punched and kicked by multiple men. Mr. Hernandez stated that it was about six to eight males who attacked him. Uh, Mr. Hernandez sorry, stated that one you. male. Um, you're, you're breaking up quite a bit. I wonder uh, if we might hear you better if you turn your camera off. There might be a, an issue. The camera. Let's see. Okay. Uh, Mr. You want me to start from the beginning? Yeah, if you wouldn't mind. I think it was just hard to, okay. there were a lot of gaps in your in what you were saying. Okay. Um, Thank you. Around 5.45 p.m. on Monday, June 6, 2022, Officer Linehan, assigned to the Alpha Delta 96, received a walk-in to Area A1 station for an assault and battery report at 279 Tremont Street. Uh, officer spoke to, with the victim, Brian Hernandez, who stated that he was assaulted while at the candy bar nightclub at 279 Tremont Street. Mr. Hernandez stated that he was walking to the bathroom when he was grabbed by the hair, thrown to the ground, and punched and kicked by, by multiple men. Hernandez stated that it was about six to eight males. Uh, Mr. Hernandez stated that it was one light-skinned male and the rest were black males. Hernandez described a light-skinned male as in his 20s, one blonde hair, and some facial hair. Uh, Mr. Hernandez stated that the attack happened in the hallway to the bathroom around 1.30 a.m. on June 6th. And then he observed the same group of males outside the club at 1.50 a.m., yelling at him when he attempted to leave. Mr. Hernandez stated that the males had something about a gun, so we left the area in the opposite direction. Uh, Hernandez stated that he received minor injuries and some cuts and bruises to his head and face during the altercation. That, that concludes the original report. Thank you. And, we um, have a supplemental as well. Uh, yes. So a supplemental is uh, on October 28th, uh, Alpha 810, Detective Walsh at Alpha responded to 275 Tremont Street, the Candy Bar Nightclub to issue a code 35 license premise violation, citation number 023617 for an incident that occurred on June 6, uh, 2022 at approximately 135 hours. Uh, the victim alleges that he was assaulted inside the nightclub on this date. A license premise hearing will be scheduled on today's date. And uh, the violation was for uh, a pay, uh, he assaulted, he alleged that he was a patron on patron uh, assault. Great. Thank you, Detective. Um, and just quickly, I did receive a, a, a chat message from an iPhone who said that they wish to testify. Are, are, are you still with us? Yes, yes, I am. Thank you. I'm going to let the licensee um, testify first, but if you could please just identify yourself so I can stir you in. I am the victim, Brian Hernandez. Brian Hernandez, thank you very much. And Mr. Hernandez, are you able to connect to video for us? I am not. I was trying to work on that. Okay. Can you please uh, just affirm for the board that you were raising your right hand? Yes, I am. And when asked to do so, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I will. Thank you very much. I will now turn it over to uh, Mr. Clavis. Mr. Delpidio, would you like to address the alleged incident? Yes, uh, this is Mr. Delpidio. Um, this is our LGBT night that has been going on for 10 years with little or no problems. On this particular night, we had a manager, head of security, five door people, and two barbacks. 
at approximately 135, there was a, a pushing match. Um, Terrence, uh, our head of security, Terrence Weathers, uh, in the security went over and broke it up. Also, uh, we did not see anybody on the ground. Mr. Mr. Weathers was saying that no one was knocked as, as to the ground. Group A was escorted out the back of the building on Warrington Street, where they just walked away. Terrence uh, then uh, was upstairs with Mr. Hernandez, and um, the group that was removed uh, onto Tremont Street, where Mr. Hernandez was yelling at customers on the street. Terrence, Mr. Mr. Terrence, told Mr. Hernandez he was going to pull over a police car. He could talk to them, which he did. Mr. Hernandez didn't want to talk to the police at the area. At no point was there any mention of any weapons that was a complete falsehood. Also, there was no signs. Um, also, I have decided in that particular area that I am going to add a security in that area uh, just to make sure nothing like this should happen again. But this is uh, this is what I have what been told to me, and I'm relaying it onto the board. Thank you, Mr. Delpidio. Mr. Clavis, anything further from you? No, I I, uh, I didn't witness any of this. Um, I uh, I I found out about it uh, afterwards uh, when I was uh, contacted by Boston Police. But other than that. Um, uh, I, I, I have nothing to add to that. Thank you. Um, Mr. Hernandez, is there any additional testimony you would like to provide to the board about the incident? Yes, thank you for allowing me an opportunity to speak. Um, I did want to say that <clears throat> on this day, I was attacked in the bathroom area of the nightclub. This was also my first time ever visiting this nightclub, um, but I was invited there with some friends who had told me about the place. So on the night of the incident, I was walking towards the bathroom where there was a huge crowd uh, about, like I said, five to seven men were there um, that day that assaulted me. They were posted by the bathroom. Um, after that night, upon my like, my own investigations with people that were there that day, I was told that the same group of people were there by the bathroom for a prolonged period of time. There was no security by the bathroom area. Um, and I'm not sure why there was never any videos in that area either to show that I actually did indeed fall to the ground. I was literally pulled down by my hair. I have long curly hair and I was pulled down by my hair onto the floor. Um, where I sustained not minor injuries. My injuries were quite major. I still have a huge scar on my forehead on, on top of my right eyebrow that if it was just a minor injury, it, it would have been gone, but it clearly wasn't. I sustained injuries everywhere. I had a bloody nose, bloody lips, bloody mouth. It was quite apparent by anyone that saw me after the attack that I had just been attacked. Um, I never spoke to Nobody ever came up to me, no, none of the officers. I personally did not see any officers separating any of this. It was, a, it all happened so quickly. I myself went straight into the bathroom and into a stall after this all happened and locked myself in. And I started calling my friend to come get me in the bathroom to help escort me out of the club. Um, my friend ended up coming, a girl from high school I graduated with, ended up coming. Um, to my rescue in the restroom. And she right away alerted the uh, security that she saw when she finally saw one. Um, there was this female blonde security guard and there was a, a, a white male security guard that both were walking into a room adjacent to the bathroom area. Um, and when we saw them, we tried to get their attention. They pushed us out of the security room. They said we couldn't be there that we had to go outside and speak to someone else, um, even though I clearly had blood, ripped shirt, and everything else on top on, on me. At that point, we decided to go upstairs outside where we see there was security guard there, and I requested to that guy, I'm not sure if that's the Terrence Weathers guy that 
Chuck was talking about, but I requested to speak to a manager. My friend Jamie Hernandez was actually very pissed off telling him as well, like, do you not see his injuries? Why are you kicking us out? Because I was being told I needed to leave the premises. I needed to leave the premises. At no point did anyone mention they were calling the police. I requested for them to call the police because I didn't, like, my, at the moment, I didn't think of me picking up my own phone and calling police. I was thinking of calling my friend so she can come and get me. So I requested for them to get me the manager. The manager never came to speak with me. Instead, I was being told to step outside when they're right at the door of the entrance. There was a big security guard. He saw the whole commotion outside. He's telling me to leave. And there was a group of people, the same people that quote unquote supposedly were walked out through the back. Well, they, I guess, managed, if they did get walked out through the back, they managed to come around to the front because by the time I was outside in the front, they were there making threats, telling me to meet them in the corner, that they had guns. And this was all said in front of patrons that were outside. I even made friends with people that live in the vicinity that were telling me like, hey, take down my number in case you need. And, and this is what happened. Like, I, I, I don't think this is any minor event. Um, like the owner was saying, they've been operating for 10 years. Not only that, I think they have about three clubs that they manage. It's Legacy, Candy Bar, and another one. So I'm quite flabbergasted that they actually didn't have any of this on video, even though I was told, you know, I was told by Officer Lindingham when I came in the next day to make my report that he was aware with this nightclub that they would actually get in trouble because they were told before that they should have called the police if any event like this happened and they did not call the police that day nor any other day. Thank you, Mr. Hernandez. Um, we'll turn it over to the board, starting with Chairman Joyce. Do you see if you have any questions for the detective, the licensee, or the witness? Thank you. Um, could someone from Legacy describe for me what the security setup is? by the bathrooms, by the doors? How many people do you have on staff on a night like this? There were five doormen, one at the front door and four on the inside of the club. And this little hallway is part of the club and it goes right into the bathrooms. And there's a doorman right by the ramp. Um, How far from the ramp where the doorman is to the bathroom door? Oh, I would say 50 feet. 50 feet, okay. Yeah. Um, and can you describe for me um, the security cameras you have on premise? Zero. Okay. Do you plan on getting security cameras? I've been trying um, to get uh, the head of the company to put them in. Um, I think he's starting to bend a little bit. So realistically, we really do need these cameras and I will push Who's the head of the high. company? Who's making this decision? That would be Lou Delpidio. Where's Lou today? Lou has COVID. Okay. This is something the board has discussed with you more than yeah. once. And That's I feel like I'm repeating myself again. And um, also, can you describe for me what your dispersal plan is? Well, you know. To make sure people leave safely. Um, People, at the end of the night, you know, we, we try to have people go out on their own accord, let them be gravity fed out. And right now, I believe that this moment, there was about 150 people in the club. Um, That's and, not really a dispersal plan. Like, describe for me as a manager what your plan is at closing hour to get people who are inside your premise out safely. Well, secure. Well, we the lights go on, the full lights and the whole club go on. Then um, we stand at one person stands at the door to make sure no drinks go out the door. Then the rest of the security just take their time and move the crowd forward. They check the bathrooms. Bathrooms are checked, absolutely. Okay. I don't have any. Um, questions right now, but I am going to ask for a full security and a full dispersal plan submitted to the board before we vote on Thursday. Okay. And I would like I would like a statement from the other Mr. Del Pidio regarding the cameras and why um, what he's been doing and what his thoughts are. 
I can do that. Let me write this. I'm gonna, I have it written down here and I will, I will talk to him today. Because the goal of a safety and security plan and a dispersal plan is to make sure that patrons leave safely and that's your responsibility. So it's not about just hoping that the crowd leaves on their own safely at their own will. Um, in the eyes of the board, that is um, not good management. It's not a safe plan. So I'd like you to put some time and pen to paper or computer to whatever. Um, and I'd like to see this by the vote. So I'd like to see it by tomorrow afternoon so that I can consider it before I vote on Thursday. I yeah, feel like yeah. we're having the same discussion over and over. Um, I'd like to know why there are no cameras, what he has done to um, research the cameras, where his mind is on the cameras as far as a business person. I'd like to see a full security plan and I'd like to see a full dispersal plan as, as well as a floor plan that shows where the security is stationed. And then we'll take our vote and consider the testimony today. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Carr and Commissioner Saxon. Any further questions? Um, just to be clear, Mr. Del Pidio, you didn't witness any part of this altercation firsthand, correct? That is correct. Okay. Do you have anyone that did uh, with us today? Am I missing? Not with me today, but okay. um, why are they here? Uh, well, one is taking their mother to the hospital for cancer, and um, and um, I was not there this particular night because this is a, a night that um, I have off after working all week. But uh, I'm also going to have um, my manager of, um, talk in, to uh, jo um, to the Madam Chairman also. But I will put the plan together for the security plan, the floor plan, the cameras, and um, I would like to get everything done that the board would like done. Thank you. And you can submit that all to licensingboard at boston.gov. I'm happy to follow up if you have any questions about what the board is asking for. Thank um, you. Commissioner Saxon, do you have any questions? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I need to know whether the security officers can see the bathroom doors that are 50 feet away. It, like, do they, is it part of their, um, you know, part of their duties to keep their eyes on the bathroom door and in, in, in that hallway? Their job is absolutely to watch that hallway. Absolutely, because they're, where he's stationed, he can see inside the club and to his right is the the little hallway that goes to the bathroom. So when you, when I mean, I, I, I pre would presume that you spoke to the, um, the security officers uh, either that evening or the next day, did they, tell, did they tell you, did they give you an account of what they saw? Did they tell you, you know, that a guy was- Every, in... Everything that I stated was stated to me by our head of security, Terrence Weathers. Oh, okay. okay. So, but Terrence Weathers is not the, are not the two people that were described by the victim. The two security, there was- no. So did, did you speak, did you, did you speak to those security people? Because it sounds like those are the security people who were posted at the door or the hallway that was 50 feet away from the bathroom. Well, Terrence is, is in the club all over the place also, but uh, I'm going to have to get more statements today and I'm going to have to get to work on everything so I can give Madam Chair everything that she wants. May I say something, please? Sure. Um, so I did want to state from the ramp that Chuck um, appears to be describing, you could see technically the entrance to the bathroom but once you're in the bathroom there's a bit of a hallway before it separates into the male and the female bathroom so from that ramp there is no visibility in there at all whatsoever and anybody can verify that either through the floor plan when he submits it or just by visiting down there the two officers now i don't remember none of them by name but as he described them um i do not think it was terrence um there was just so Chuck knows for his uh, further investigation. Um, it was a female blonde officer who was working that night. 
and a male white officer who was working that night that were the ones who closed the door on me to the security room adjacent to that hallway in the bathroom when I was asking for help. Then I had to walk outside and I saw there was about two or three um, security at the door at that point. So I know you said there's normally only one up, up there. At that uh, night, it was three. Um, so just so, so you're aware, I do know uh, that. I just, this, as the crowd is being dispersed and it gets lower and lower, I send more doormen outside. The crowd wasn't being dispersed yet. The, the club was still open. The lights had not been on. I was just walking to the bathroom um, when this happened. Mm -hmm. In fact, I, I left. I was already outside as well as the other party. The, the people that attacked me were already outside and the club was still lights out. Like the lights were still off. No, nobody had closed down yet. None of that. You would think after such an event that, you know, you turn on the light and let's shut it early because it wasn't that much early anyways, but it, it, it was not, it was not closing time yet is, is basically what I'm trying to say. The club was still open. Um, there were crowds that saw me outside afterwards that had mentioned like, oh my God, what happened? Was that you? Like, so a lot of people saw this happening. But technically, no one came in and helped me. No one came in and, you know, aided me when I was in dire need. And what they did was, what your security did was technically seeing me bloodied and ripped shirt and all, tell me to step outside when you have such a huge building that one of your security guards could have actually brought me upstairs to the Legacy Nightclub or somewhere else where I was safe and not put in the street with the people that you had just kicked out. That is Thank all. You. Anything further from the board at this time? Uh, I have one more question for um, mm -hmm. the premises. Um, when were you made aware that this, uh, that a complaint had been made regarding this incident? Raji? Uh, several weeks later. Uh, yeah. they, were ask, they were asking for a video from, uh, we have because we do have a camera in the hallway where people come in and out. Uh, going to before they enter the club up uh, at the bottom of the stairs when they come down, there's a camera there. But by the time the detective asked me for video, uh, the, the lapse on the uh, on the uh, machine was already gone. It only, it only lasts for about two or three weeks at the most. So there was no video at that that's point. The, that's the only that so you do have cameras. So you have one camera. It, there's yeah, as, as, you, as you come down the stairs. From the street there, there's a camera right there um which shows but as, as as inside of the club zero okay thank you thank all right you. can you can you narrow that down a little bit more did, did you hear from the police or, or anyone regarding this before the day they arrived to serve the uh, code 35 not me uh but I, yeah I, I did get a, a phone call but it was it was it was uh like several weeks after this had occurred. So that's when you were aware that someone had uh, raised the alarm. About it. Correct. Okay. Um, and do, did you make any internal reports regarding this either, you know, right after or in response to this um, phone call that you got? Uh, well, I, I, like I said, I, I, I I didn't hear about that. However, uh, Terrence uh, did uh, uh, write up a report um, uh, and, and read it to me last night. Uh, we were going over this. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, the night before. And uh, so he, there is a written report that 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 that, that, it, that we. Yeah, was it? I'm asking, was it created at the time in June? Uh, it was uh, yeah yeah but uh, it, like the next day or, or that night but you know a after after everything happened we we usually write up uh, okay. some notes and stuff and then we'll write an official report right after that and you write up reports um, during pushing matches uh, well any, anything that uh, we think may uh, may may you know keep our minds fresh and and uh, of Things that happen at the club, yes, uh, we, we we keep like from a, we keep a log of of things that go on in the club. 
uh, whether it's uh, incidents like this or slip mm -hmm. and falls or, um, you know, uh, things that happen outside, whatever, even stuff that doesn't have to do with us. All right. That's all I have. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, um, yes, I'm sorry. Um, I did want to highlight. I'm sorry, this is the victim again. I, I just wanted to highlight some discrepancy I had noticed and perhaps I don't have the full detail, but I know Detective Mark Walsh from A1 um, was the initial assigned officer detective to this. I was informed by him because I remember being very adamant when I came in the next day to the police station to report that we needed to get the cameras so I can see who the people were because I wasn't sure and I felt without that information I wouldn't be able to safely um, go back out to the night you know any nightclubs in Boston um, without knowing who these attackers were so I do recall Mark Walsh the detective had mentioned to me that he reached out left a couple of voicemails within that first initial week and that he had actually emailed them as well. So I did want you guys to have that information and maybe D um, Detective Walsh has more on that, but, but I do know he did reach out multiple times. So the cameras must have expired within a two week frame because by the time he reached out, he had already told me he was told the videos were scrubbed. Thank you. Uh, one more time I'll ask, is there any, any further questions from the board? Thank you, Mr. Del Pidio, Please do uh, provide to the board the requested security and dispersal plans, uh, as well as uh, a, a chart or a map of all cameras and uh, the additional questions that the board had asked for um, by the time that the record closes at the end of the day tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. The board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Calling item number four, Oliver Twist, Inc., doing business as Cask and Flagon, located at 62 Brookline Ave. Date of the incident, June 17th, 2022, a patron on patron fight in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Good morning again, Attorney Green, Madam Chair, members of the board, Dennis Quilty, attorney representing the licensee. With me this morning is Jennifer Nunn, who's the assistant manager who's in charge on the night in question, as well as Jimmy Regalado. Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Van Fleet, um, came down quite sick this morning, Dana Van Fleet, who would normally be with us uh, for from ownership is uh, battling the flu and unable to be with us this morning. Good morning. Good morning, thank you. Uh, who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Officer Piquero. Sergeant Dunn. Thank you, and are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? Can you all please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth? Uh, Mr. Regalado, you as well, if you could please raise your right hand. Thank you. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. I do. Thank you very much. Uh, who will be reading the police report into the record? I will, Officer Pagaro. Jamie, you can your hand down. Okay. <laughs> At about 12, 19 a.m. on Friday, June 17, 2022, Officer Pagaro and Officer Rosario of the Delta 101 Alpha responded to a radio call for a fight outside of Cass and Flanagan restaurant located at 62 Brooklyn, uh, Brooklyn Avenue at Boston, Mass. Upon arrival, officers were met by multiple parties on the scene who informed officers that a fight in progress was further down the street at the intersection of Brooklyn Ave and Newberry Street. Officers then drove further down the street to arrive on scene but did not observe a fight in progress. At this time, officers were then approached by two security officers from the Cass and Flanagan stepped out of the cruiser to talk to them, but pointed towards a white Ford Explorer SUV that was traveling further down inbound on Doomberry Street and stated the suspects were leaving in that vehicle. The security officers described one of the suspects to be a black female wearing a yellow jumpsuit. At this time, officers observed a white Ford Explorer SUV from a distance, but could not make out the plate number as it was traveling down inbound on Newberry Street. Officers then immediately got into the cruiser and attempted to catch up to the white Ford Explorer, but were unsuccessful. Officers then traveled down Newberry Street, turned left on Camor Street, and began to cam canvas the Camor Square area <clears throat> for the white Ford Explorer. While canvassing the area, the officers gave out a bolo description of the vehicle to Channel 5 dispatcher for other officers to assist. While traveling outbound on 
Commonwealth Ave officers observed a white Ford Explorer with mass reg two Tango X-ray Bravo 87 at the intersection of Calm Ave and Beacon Street on a left turn only lane to Brookline Ave. At this time, officer initiated a traffic stop of the vehicle at the intersection of Brookline Ave and Newberry Street. The vehicle was occupied by two black females, but neither one was matching the description of a yellow jumpsuit. Both parties were then released without further incident. After the traffic stop, <clears throat> officers were approached by a female party that was later identified as victim two, Jordan, Jordan Latire. Victim two informed officers that her friend, victim one, Courtney Kelly, were one of the victims of a fight and wanted to report her friend's cardholder, black Kate Spade bag being lost during the fight. Victim two provided the identity of victim one in the description of the lost property, but officers made their way down to Task and Flanagan at 62 Brooklyn I. Brooklyn app to speak to victim one in person. Upon arrival, officers spoke to victim one, Courtney Kelly, who was able to provide information on how the incident transpired. Officers observed the victim one to have a swollen lip, offered EMS, but she denied medical attention. Victim one, victim one stated she and victim two entered the woman's bathroom at Cassie Flanagan when multiple suspects, for unknown reasons, began to fist fight with her and victim two. Due to the commotion of the fight, victim one could not could only remember and provide the description of one suspect as a skinny black female, five, seven tall, with a ponytail wearing a yellow jumpsuit. After the fight in the bathroom, the fight then initiated again outside the bar between victim one, victim two, victim two and the same suspects. While the second fight was occurring outside, victim three, Joseph Kelly, intervened to help his sister, who was victim two, Courtney Kelly. During the fight, the victim three, stated he was assaulted and kicked onto the ground by multiple suspects and was able, unable to provide any descriptions of the suspect. Victim three had an abrasion to his face and a bloody nose. Victim three was offered EMS and denied medical attention, but stated he will maybe seek medical attention to the, follow, the following day. Officers attempted to gain information from victim two, Jordan Latire, but she did not want to cooperate with officers. Officers was unable to retain as much as information of, vic of victim two as they can from victim one. During the incident involved party one, Richard McGuire informed officers he intended to separate the fight but lost his watch, Silver Murado, during the commotion. Uh, Delta 905 Sergeant Dunn and Delta 902 Sergeant Hoban arrived on scene, took photos of injuries, and issued a code 35. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Officer Piguero. Uh, Attorney Quilty, would you like to address the alleged incident? I apologize. Oh. Real quick, uh, there was a sub supplemental that was submitted um, or completed that night. Uh, however, for some reason, uh, in preparation for this, it, it appears it's still, uh, it was unapproved. I've expedited that, but I can read that if uh, anybody would like. Uh, we do not have that report. It has not been provided to the, the license. Yeah, nor do I. Okay. Thank you, though. Attorney uh, Pulte, would you like to address the alleged incident? Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Attorney Green. Um, officer, from the uh, reading of your report, it would appear that you arrived on the scene uh, after the incident had already occurred. Is that correct? Correct. And it was uh, two security personnel from the Cask and Flagon who told you what had occurred, described the vic described the perpetrator, described the vehicle. Would it be fair to say that they cooperated with you fully in this regard? Correct. They cooperated with us. And to your to your knowledge, we are. I'm informed by uh, Ms. Nan and Mr. Regalado that it was uh, staff from the Cask and Flagon who made the 911 call. Is that consistent with what you have? Uh, I don't recall who made the 911 call. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't have that information. I don't don't remember. Okay, but your your uh, the the notice does indicate that the police were called. Correct, they were. We responded. And your the report also indicates management cooperated with the police. Fully. They cooperated. Okay. Um, thank you, sir. I have no further questions of the officer. Um, I do want to just let the board know that uh, the incident, as we understand it, began inside the women's bathroom, in which location there are no cameras for obvious reasons. Uh, so staff was not aware of anything that had occurred until after these folks got outside. Uh, and at, at that time, understanding that something had occurred, our staff went out, followed, called the police, 
and then gave the descriptions of everything they knew at that time and stood by uh, to cooperate, which I think by all indications they did. Uh, Ms. Nan uh, was present. She signed the uh, violation notice. Uh, and we're certainly happy to answer any um, questions you may have. Thank you. Uh, Chairman Joyce, do you have any questions? All right, I'm just trying to um, dig through the police report. So the fight started inside the bathroom. Police were called by staff. And who did you say on staff called the police? We're not the a lot of these staff. This was as you as you know, this was six months ago. Some of these staff members are no longer with us, including the two security personnel who made the call. Um, but we just we our information internally is that our staff called the police. The security men rushed outside, called the police. That was done to the to the best of our knowledge. The report indicates that the police were called. The verbiage of the report indicates that our staff did nothing but cooperate. So our our, our internal um, understanding appears to be backed up by the police report that it was our staff who did it. It does indicate they were called. It says by whom, and that portion is blank, unfortunately. Okay. I have the, the call up here. Mr. Uh, Bar Bariga is, uh, as the um, CAD indicates, the caller. I, I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. Say that again, please. In the CAD, it says that the caller, for, uh, the 911 caller in this is a Mr. Bariga, Carlos Bariga. Okay. Is, none, is that is that a uh, security person, do you know, or is that a staffer? No, they are not. Sorry, I did, I did not have that, uh, Madam Chair. I would have. Yeah, that's okay. We don't have any there. Um, I understand it was just approved. Um, I don't have any other questions right now. Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran? Um, I am a little concerned about, it looks like, you know, the, we have the fight and then the there's a brother who, who is able to get involved and then another third party. How, how does that happening when security is handling the matter? Uh, I, I, it, it's unclear to me as well, reading this report, it appears as though people were, were interviewed after the the chase of the white vehicle back at the location. I I I I just I don't know. It's again very unclear. Our, it's very clear to me that our security is the ones who pointed out, described the perpetrators, et cetera, et cetera. But as to coming back and speaking to people back at the scene, I we have no information about these other folks, unfortunately. Okay, no information from the security personnel or any, anyone who works there that can tell us. Jimmy, do you have any, or or Jennifer, any idea about what happened with these folks being interviewed afterwards back at the scene? No, I mean, inter intervening, like they were getting involved in the fight. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I, I, I meant to say intervening. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. So Jimmy or Jennifer, do either of you have any information on this? Yes, so when the incident had happened at Cask and Flagon in the restrooms, I know that my security men told me that they had exited the premises, so they had followed them down the street because they saw that a situation would be escalating. So they went down there to ensure that the situation had been de-escalated. And then when they were approached by the officers, I believe they were outside somewhere or had seen the situation together. And then that's when parties were questioned, I believe. But eventually they came back to Cask and Flag and, and um, the detectives came. Okay, so most of this that's described in the report is happening well down the street, is that correct? That's what it appears. Okay, thank you. At the corner of Newbury Street, which is just down basically between us and Kenmore. Yep, all right, thank you. Um, how often are your uh bathrooms just monitored like does is there a female security that goes in maybe like every 15 minutes or so or... so yeah. at this time so at this time we don't have a security female uh, on our way staff but um we use you know the um females you know like uh runner bassers employees um you know other females in the building as well to help us you know what i mean keep track on the on the restrooms in order to avoid any any issues so that gets, you know, like I will say every 15, 20 minutes. 
and so none of them noticed anything? No. Anything further from the board? Thank you. The board will take this matter under advisement as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number six, Game On Fenway LLC, doing business as Game On Sports Cafe, located at 72 to 82 Lansdowne Street, date of the incident, August 7th, 2022. Staff versus patron fight in violation of Mass General Law, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Again, uh, Mr. Uh, Green, Attorney Green, Dennis Quilty, and Madam Chair members, Dennis Quilty, attorney representing the licensee, with me this morning uh, from the establishment Corvington, Demond, uh, Katina Coropines from Alliance Group, and who else do we have, Katina? That's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay, thank you. Good morning. Great. Thank you very much. Who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Sergeant Michael Sullivan from District D4. Thank you. And are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? You all please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you, Sergeant Sullivan. You may please proceed with the police report. Thank you. Good morning. I'm going to read from Officer Crowley's uh, original incident report. At about 1.46 a.m. on Sunday, August 7th, he and Officer Enriquez responded to a radio call for a fight at 62 Brookline Street. Uh, I think it's supposed to be Brookline Ave. While officers were clearing out the original 911 call, Officer Crowley was about to enter his patrol vehicle when he observed a large Hispanic male who was later identified as Randolph Gambaro Cruz standing over a short white male. The officer observed Cruz and the other individual yelling at each other in a threatening and confrontational manner. At this time, the officer observed Cruz physically grab and shove the smaller individual against a wall. Seeing this, the officer quickly ran over to Cruz's location to break up the altercation before it got more physical. Upon arrival uh, to the fight, the officer attempted to physically separate the two individuals. During this time, the smaller white male immediately stopped fighting and complied with the officers. Mr. Cruz continued to resist uh, the officer. Therefore, the officer had to physically push Mr. Cruz back to create distance between he and the other party. Crews remained uncooperative with the officer throughout the entire interaction. During this time, numerous D4 officers responded to the location of, uh, to assist. Once they were able to finally calm Mr. Cruz down, Officer Crowley asked him what happened. Mr. Cruz informed the officers that an intoxicated individual proceeded to start yelling at him that he was, quote, he was just a cleaner. Uh, hearing this, Mr. Cruz exited the premise and followed the individual to confront him in this matter. Um, he attempted to speak with the other party involved, who was highly intoxicated, and it was determined the best course of action was to send him on his way. Um, Sergeant Sullivan responded to the scene, spoke with the manager, and conducted a Code 35 license premise check of the establishment. There is a brief supplement that I offered as well, if you'd like me to read that. We do not have a supplemental, and I do not believe the licensee has seen it either. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you. Uh, I will turn to uh, Attorney Colty if you would like to address the alleged incident. Uh, if, if I may, thank you. Um, is it Officer Sullivan? Sergeant, sir. Sergeant, I'm sorry. No problem. Thank you guys for that. Um, the uh, inspection notice indicates police were called by staff. Is that consistent with what your belief is, your understanding is? I'm unsure. It, to my knowledge, it may have been two separate fight calls. It was a very busy post-concert evening uh, in the Fenway area. Uh -huh. But the you you have the inspection notice, and it does indicate police were called by staff. I'm not sure staff of which establishment is the, the is the issue, whether it be the cask and flag in or game on. But game on is the is the licensee in this incident, right? That's correct. If you if you read the initial uh, line of the report, we were called there for a fight outside of the cask. And then while on scene, Officer Crowley observed staff from Game On in an issue uh, in front of their location as well. So like I said, it's a large sort of uh, flowing dynamic situation where there's a fight in front of one location, then another in front of the other. Interesting. You know, these two establishments are about 100 feet apart, directly across the street from each other? Yes, they're very close. Oh, okay. Well, in any event, the, the inspection notice does indicate that staff called the police. Correct? 
Hello? Yes, that's what was noted on there. Okay, and and that management cooperated with the police. They certainly did. Okay, thank you, sir. I, um, I, I have, I, I, just, I don't have any other questions. Um, again, I mean, I think the, our staff did everything they were supposed to do in the circumstances. This was an unfortunate incident. Uh, Mr. Cruz is uh, no longer employed by the establishment. Um, what we believe happened is that he, this other fellow was teasing him or calling him names or something. And instead of closing the door and walking away, he went out and confronted the guy. And that's, we believe what occurred. Um, again, our, our, we, we believe it was our staff who called. I don't want to get into an argument about that, but, uh, again, um, we, that, that's really all we know about it, unfortunately. Um, Certainly happy to answer your questions. Thank you. Uh, Chairman Joyce, any questions? Um, at this point, how long had Mr. Cruz worked for the establishment? Katina, do you know? Corvington? I believe for uh, about six to eight months. And were there any disciplinary actions with Mr. Cruz leading up to this night? No. And the officer stated this was a very, um, it was a very busy post-concert night. Does anyone remember? Or could you tell me what concert it was that night? Um, I can't, I don't remember off the top of my head. There, I, I believe okay. there were several concerts these, within that weekend. On these busy post-concert nights, how do you train your staff at the beginning of the evening? Do you take into consideration the fact that there's a concert? Is it do you have additional training? Is it the standard training that you have on a night, on a summer night like this? I'm trying to get into um, what management did as far as training the staff that night, including Mr. Cruz. So this was uh, for this incident. It every it happened during the end of the night. So I believe it was around like 1:30 or 1:45 uh, during closing time. So uh, we usually have multiple security guards within the entire building just making sure that a um everything's secured and we're making sure that people are well, there are people in certain sections and watching over the entire building so um we also have like around like nine to 12 door guys depending on especially during concerts so we have a, a huge amount of staff there to oversee everything with several managers as well so we do have people going over events and just making sure if we do no concerts, we just go over everything and just make sure everything's all right. And, and Madam Chair, I do want to add one thing that it's it's the, the protocol of the establishment that at last call, the establishment, the doors are closed and no new customers obviously are allowed in. And that's especially true on concert nights because as the sergeant indicated, the street outside becomes quite busy as you can imagine at, um, end of concert, et cetera, and at times when all of these establishments are um, um, closing down, if you will. Any any further questions, Chairman Joyce? Uh, no, not for me. Thank you. Commissioner Carter, Commissioner Saxon, any questions? Uh, what is What was Mr. Cruz's position with the company? He was a uh, security guard. Okay. Um, and in your security staff, do you have like supervisors or, you know, where was there any kind of ranker there? Yes. Uh, we had Isaiah Thompson, who was uh, the head of security at the time there. Uh, he was doing his uh, routine. So he was downstairs patrolling downstairs, making sure that all the door guys were in position and making sure nothing was happening downstairs at the time. And so was Mr. Cruz alone um, at his post? Yes. Uh, yes, he was upstairs by himself because the, the doors were already closed and locked. Um, and we were just doing all the door guys were making sure that um, downstairs was being cleared out. Okay, I think that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Saxon, any questions? None for me. Thank you. Thank you very much. The board will take this matter under advisement. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.
Calling item number seven, Emanuel Enterprises LLC, located at 71 to 73 Meridian Street in East Boston, dated the incident October 16th, 2022, bottle service violation, Aguardiente Crafts on table, in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Karina Wujaili, the assistant manager. Great, thank you very much. And who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Sergeant William Gallagher. I am Detective Hernandez. Thank you. And are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify? Can you all please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Yeah. Thank you. Who will be reading the police report into the record? I will be. Thank you. You may proceed. Good morning. I'll be reading it from, from police report, which I wrote on Sunday, October 16th. 2022 signed Detective William Gallagher and Detective Eddie Hernandez signed of the BPD license permit unit conducted a license permit inspection of El Diamante located 71 Meridian Street in East Boston. <clears throat> While walking through the establishment, detectives observed patrons sitting at a table with a crap of uh, hard alcohol, a gliente placed on the table. The bottle was left unattended and made available for full, full service access to make beverages. Detectives informed the person in charge Mr. Angel Negron, that this is a prohibited practice. Bottle service is not a condition allowed on the, into the establishment common victual license. Mr. Negron stated that he would immediately correct the um, situation. As a result of what detectives observed, Sergeant Gallagher issued license, Sergeant Detective Gallagher issued license premise inspection notice 058960, the premise providing bottle service without approval of the Boston Licensing Board. Mr. Negron signed for and accepted the notice. <coughs> Let him know. Uh, thank you very much. Um, would the licensee like to address the alleged incident? Yes, um, we had a, this incident this night. We do not sell bottles. What happened is uh, the waiter is being asked to serve eight shots of this uh, aguardiente. So she poured them into the craft and she left it on the table by mistake. And we correct the mistake and we have told all the staff we're not supposed to do this. We're supposed to pour the drinks into the shots. Thank you. Anything further? Or is that that that's all you'd like to provide to the board? No, that'd be it. Thank you, Chairman Joyce. Do you have any questions? I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? You people ordered shots, and you were allowing them to pour them themselves. Is that what it was? No, no, no. no. What happened that night? They ordered eight shots. I don't know eight if that. Shots, okay. Yeah, the, if the detective can recall that it was a table of, of about six, eight people. So they ordered a shot. So the waiter, what she did, she poured them into the craft and she bring the shots on the craft to the table and left the craft unattended. Instead of she poured the shots into the, uh, into the, um, um, uh, the shots, yeah. she, left, uh, she left the craft unattended in the table. Okay. Why would she have done that? Mm. I will say it's an honest mistake. She thought that not pouring the shots on the on the glasses, it was okay. And we explained to her it's not okay. She needs to pour the drinks into the glass. Okay. And, and what was the um, alcohol that was being served in shots? Uh, aguardiente. Okay. Is that, I'm not familiar, is that a beer wine? Um, or liquor? Yeah, we are. We are. We have licenses to serve those. Yeah. Okay. Um, but again, we do not sell bottles. Okay. All right. I uh, don't have any other questions at this time. Commissioner Carmen, Commissioner Sachs, any questions? Miss, what is your position with this company? Um, the assistant manager. Okay, uh, how long have you been with the company? About three, four years. Three or four years, okay. So in 2019, we had a similar incident. Are you aware of this? Mm, no, I think I wasn't around by that time. Okay, um, what, 
what do you use the calves for if they're not for serving aguardiente in um, you know in a carrot form? Uh, we serve um, orange juices. We serve cranberry juice. Just to serve juices, sodas. So what training? Yeah. What training do you have to um, to tell your employees that the, the liqueurs don't belong belong in the carrots? Yeah, what happened is uh, this uh, waiter is, is new. So they, she thought instead of she served the drinks behind the bar, it'd be easier for her to carry it to the table like that. So which is, we explained to her, we're not allowed to do that. But that was only after the fact, correct? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Saxon, any questions? No questions from me. Thank you. Very much. Uh, the board will take this matter under advisement as well. Thank you. Thank you. Following item number eight, Castaneda Gomez Corporation doing business as La Fonda Colombiana, located at 972 to 974 Saratoga Street in East Boston. Date of the incident, October 16th, 2022. Bottle service violation, premise conducting bottle service without permission in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Is anybody present on behalf of La Fonda Colombia? We will take a second call. Calling item number nine, Neptune Oyster LLC, doing business as Neptune Oyster, located at 63 Salem Street. Date of the incident, October 22nd, 2022, over capacity <coughs> five on mechanical count, capacity 30, in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Boards Rule 1.03J and 1.06A and F. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Good morning, I'm Jeff Nace from Neptune Oyster. I'm the Chief Operating Officer. Great, thank you, Mr. Nace. Who is present on behalf of what, the bus? Uh, sorry, uh, sorry uh, uh, Commissioner Green, uh, it's Craig Stomach. I, I was muted, attorney for Neptune's. So, and I have general manager and owner, Jeffrey Nace also. So sorry about that. Great, thank you, no worries, but, uh, Attorney Stunlock, we got you on now. Uh, who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Uh, Detective William Gallagher. Detective Hernandez, if needed. <clears throat> thank you, and are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? Can you all please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Thank you, Sergeant Detective Gallagher. You may please proceed with the police report. Yes, on 10-22-2022 at 9.56 p.m., Sergeant Detective William Gallagher and Detective Eddie Hernandez assigned to the licensed premise unit conducted a licensed premise inspection of Neptune Oyster Bar at 63 Salem Street. This inspection came about because of a complaint received at City Hall regarding patrons of Neptune blocking the sidewalk to the point, making it impassable. Detectives did observe a small line as they made their way inside. Detectives also observed the premise to be crowded with all patrons occupying all seats. Detectives conducted a mechanical count of the premise, which resulted in 35 persons being counted. The whistle's capacity is set at 30. Detectives spoke to the manager, Mr. Jeffrey Mace, and relayed their concerns of the blocked sidewalk and overcapacity of the premise. Mr. Mace acknowledged the line has been a concern and they've been working on it. With regards to the overcapacity, Mr. Mace took corrective action. As a result, what was observed, Sergeant Gallagher is your licensed premise inspection notice number 059208, Neptune Oyster Bar for overcrowding, 35 mechanical count. Capacity 30, Mr. Jeffrey Mace, signed for and accepted the notice. That is it. Thank you. Uh, Attorney Stelmach, would you like to address the alleged incident? Sure. On this, on this particular evening, um, it's important to note that it was the head of the Charles weekend. Um, the North End had recently just stopped the seating on the sidewalks. So it was extremely full of people. There were many tourists on the streets and the sidewalks in the North End. It was also 54 degrees, which meant it was cold and people were all jockeying, trying to get into restaurants and other establishments. And, uh, admittedly, the sidewalks and streets were packed, but on this particular incident, when the officer came to talk to Mr. Nace, and, and I'll let Mr. Nace speak, 
But when he came downstairs, um, you know, we had done our own count and we did not count 35 people, including uh, employees in the restaurant. We actually counted somewhere in the vicinity of just over 20. Now, in this particular instance, we believe that a lot of these uh, individuals were transitory because there were people coming in to use the bathroom. There were large groups, many of which were putting on their coats, starting to leave. We were The employees were, were shepherding them out the door, but still we had people who were still in the restaurant lingering and then people coming back in and out. Um, so we believe that this was just a, a, a very uh, a, a bad incident. Um, that really was transitory in nature, and it's not something that's occurring. Mr. Nace is fully aware of the guidelines uh, and capacity of that restaurant. We have had haven't had any violations in 18 years. So um, that is that is our position at this time. And I would, I would like to direct a, a few questions to Mr. Nace, which if he could talk about uh, uh, Jeff, if you could talk about what your what happened when the officer first approached you on October 22nd? Uh, of course. Um, it was, like Craig said, it was a very busy weekend. It was headed to Charles. Um, the streets in the North End, particularly on this weekend, were jam-packed. Um, so we have, our front of the house staff is severely trained to deal, and, and they know Everyone knows that our capacity is 30. Um, at that point, when I walked in, we had, I, I would say, four or five people that had finished eating, were in a line using the restroom, and were heading out the door. And the host was bringing another party in, but it was dissipating. So, like Craig said, we only had probably our count was maybe 25, including uh, staff. So um, we are continuously um, operating at to keep it below 30. And it's also, uh, Jeff, could you talk about what you've done since the incident, including the stanchions and additional training? Uh, absolutely. Uh, Detective Gallagher actually recommended um, we introduce stanchions out to kind of keep the sidewalk separated from uh, patrons waiting in line and um, people walking down the sidewalk trying to, to bypass. And I think that actually was a, a great recommendation. We use it every day and it's, it's been very helpful. So thank you, Detective, for recommending that. And Mr. Nace, how long have you been in business in the North End? Uh, we opened up in November of 2004, so uh, a little over 18 years now. And have you had any other incidents or violations since that time? We, we have not. Thank you. So I have no further questions, and I don't have any questions for Detect Detective Gallagher either. Thank you. Chairman Joyce, do you have any questions? Not about the overcapacity um, at this time, no. Commissioner Carmen, Commissioner Saxon, any questions? I don't have any questions, thank you. None from me either, thank you. Thank you, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Items 10 and 11 uh, have been continued at the request of the licensee and will be rescheduled to the next available hearing date. We will now take a second call uh, for item number eight. Has anybody joined us from La Fonda Colombiana? I know that staff was able to contact them. They were hoping to get back on the hearing as soon as possible. Just give a moment to see if they've been able to join. Chairman Joyce, would you like to uh, reschedule or have the police report read into the record? We do know that they were served. Um, we can just reschedule. Okay, then we will reschedule item number eight for the next available hearing date as well. Those are all of the items before the board today that will adjourn today's hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you.